Hi, I'm Ian Johnston. Episode 1 of this video series introduced you to leptospirosis. This episode is going to tell you about lepto in people, including who is at risk from contracting the disease and how it can affect you. Lepto is found around the world. It's most common in areas of the world with a warm, moist climate, areas experiencing routine flooding and those stricken by poverty. Of the developed countries with readily available food, clean water and medicine, New Zealand has the highest rate each year. There were 113 people diagnosed with lepto in 2012 in New Zealand. However, there are likely to be many more cases of the disease than this due to issues with accuracy of lab testing, difficulty with diagnosis as it's a flu-like illness, and generally due to people toughing it out rather than seeing a doctor. More than half of the 113 people diagnosed in 2012 were farmers. The other occupations that get lepto infection also work with animals or have animal contact, most commonly meat processing workers. Also stock truck drivers, hunters, sewer workers and vets are at risk, anyone exposed to animals. Other activities associated with infection include home killing, shearing, overseas travel and water sports or swimming in infected lakes and rivers. Most notified cases of infection with lepto are men of working age. John Kerr, an occupational physician, has 36 years of experience diagnosing and treating lepto. Here he discusses the illness in people. And deer farmer Mike Humphrey talks about his first-hand experience of lepto infection. It affects every part of a human's life really uh, in terms of getting really, really sick. Uh, in terms of the after effects often with depression, fatigue and then alongside that often goes of course loss of employment, loss of enjoyment of life, marital discord, uh, irritability with the children and on and on it goes. It uh, affects every corner of a person's uh, being really. The, the degree of severity varies hugely from people who don't even know they've had the disease to people who end up uh, being so sick that they're in intensive care. And uh, the figures that I've seen suggest that about 40% of people who have known infection, confirmed by blood test, will end up in intensive care. It's that serious. People remain debilitated, unfortunately, for life. And that usually relates to the lethargy, the fatigue, the depression. It's important to say, I think, that the more common outcome though <coughs> is that people after a few weeks, maybe a month or two, will be back. Uh, they may need to make a rather graduated return to work rather than jumping in at the deep end and uh, just take it slowly and pace themselves for a while. Mm -hmm. Basically two of my best friends just lived down the road. Um, one, one was in hospital a couple, couple years ago and um, Boxing Day or New Year's Eve or something. He was at the beach and just got crooker and crooker and said, "Hey, you know, can someone take me to the doc ho hospital, please?" And um, yeah, and as I say, the other friend worked in a deer slaughter plant, and um, he, he he was one that had three weeks in bed. And I mean, he's sort of not the character that lies around either. Well, yeah, I, I was very lucky that you know I had met, ran into my next door neighbour who knows all about it. Um, owning a lamb slaughter plant and deer slaughter plant, you know, he, his, the workers are getting it all the time. And, um, I mean, I was lucky that it, you know, it might have cost me uh, four or five days work, and mm -hmm. I mean, I'm self-employed, so it just meant, you know, it was a few bit of work didn't get done and it was, it was there to be done later. If you don't do it today, it's there for tomorrow. But, um, so I was, I, was just, I was just very lucky, but, you know, you just see everyone else's effects that uh, don't, be lucky enough to catch it as early as I do uh, can affect some people for the rest of their lives. Contracting the disease after exposure to infected animal urine, for instance, does not happen straight away. It can take anywhere from a day to even a month to start showing symptoms and feeling crook. So you need to think about your previous month's activities if you develop flu-like symptoms. If you're employed in one of the high-risk occupations mentioned earlier, livestock farming, meat processing or stock truck driving, even if you've only helped out a friend for a day or two and experience flu-like symptoms, please see your doctor as soon as possible and ask them whether it could be lepto. 
Also remember, it is possible to be infected with lepto multiple times. A lepto infection can last anywhere from a few days to a lifetime of debilitation. Getting to a doctor early can reduce the severity of the disease and lead to fewer complications in the future. I always say to people, particularly who work in an exposed uh, vocation, if you've got a flu-like illness, for goodness sake, go to the doctor straight away and if need be, tell, tell the doctor your suspicion because it's that high level of suspicion that will not only nail the diagnosis but affect a good treatment. You can contact us if there are still questions you have after watching this or if anything is not clear.